Hi, I'm Dr. Laurent Bannock and I'm the Director of the Institute of Performance Nutrition. And in this Science to Practice overview, I'm going to be focusing on BCAAs and muscle protein synthesis. So skeletal muscle is constantly being turned over, which means it's being synthesized and degraded simultaneously, or effectively created and broken down at the same time. This happens so that the body can get rid of these old proteins and replace them with new ones. But in order to gain muscle mass, protein synthesis rates needs to be greater than the rates of protein degradation. And if the opposite occurs, well, muscle is going to be lost. And muscle anabolism or muscle gain is driven by the stimulation of protein synthesis rather than the inhibition of its breakdown. Although in theory, this could cause anabolism too. So the claims that BCA supplements increase anabolism seem potentially plausible. But how? How is this, how is this possible? Well, firstly, what are BCAAs? And of course, they're amino acids, and there's 20 of them. And 11 of them are non-essential, which means the body can actually make them themselves. But nine are essential, which means the body cannot make them, cannot be manufactured by the body. And therefore, they must acquire them exogenously from the diet or through dietary supplements. And of those nine essential amino acids, three of which are what is called the branch chain amino acids. And these are isoleucine, leucine, and valine. Now, the claims that are being made for branch chain amino acids are that they can increase protein synthesis, they can decrease protein breakdown, and they can even increase lean mass. But what actually is the evidence behind this? How can they substantiate their claims for this? Well, this is largely based on the branch chain amino acid leucine. And research shows that leucine activates proteins that initiate muscle protein synthesis. And research on rats showing that the infusion of branch chain amino acids does increase rates of muscle protein synthesis. And this means that rats likely have an ample amino acid pool to permit their translation to muscle proteins. Branch chain amino acids in humans can activate muscle protein synthesis. However, they cannot sustain translation. And this is because branch chain amino acids alone do not provide all of the essential amino acids and humans do not have big enough of an amino acid pool in the post-absorptive state to support increased muscle protein synthesis rates. So there we have it. The evidence tells us that significant increases in muscle protein synthesis in the post-absorptive state requires all of the amino acids to be present. And why is that? Well, the only source of essential amino acids in the post-absorptive state is from muscle protein breakdown. And about 70% of these essential amino acids are released by muscle protein breakdown and reincorporated into muscle protein. But branch chain amino acids cannot significantly increase reincorporation of essential amino acids into muscle. And since branch chain amino acids can also inhibit muscle protein breakdown, this causes even less amino acids to be available for muscle protein synthesis. And so for this fundamental reason, a dietary supplement of branch chain amino acids alone cannot support a sustained increase in muscle protein synthesis. So what are the take home messages from the evidence on this topic? Well, firstly, the claims that branch chain amino acids alone increase muscle anabolism in humans are not evidence based. And specific amino acids, and namely leucine, may act as an anabolic trigger, but they will not, or it will not result in sustained muscle protein synthesis unless a full complement of amino acids are available for translation. So this means that consuming a complete protein such as whey 
is much more effective for stimulating and sustaining muscle protein synthesis rates, resulting in anabolism. Therefore, the claims that BCAAs alone cause muscle anabolism are untrue. And this is because it is not physiologically possible for this to happen for reasons that I've just explained. So you need to read more into this. And um, the main paper that I've based this presentation off is this one, which you can easily access. It's open access. Um, Branch chain amino acids and muscle protein synthesis in humans, myth or reality by Professor Bob Wolf, Robert Wolf. He is pretty much the world's leading expert on this topic. So that is an essential uh, evidence base for you to get your information from on this topic. I also recommend listening to a number of podcasts that I've done on related um, areas, including these two with the first one here, protein supplementation and resistant exercise training with Dr. Rob Morton, where we discuss um, this very topic as well as Protein and Update with Professor Stu Phillips and Professor Kevin Tipton, world leading experts um, on anything to do with protein and amino acids um, and exercise adaptations, um, are both highly recommended. I also recommend, um, uh, equally important here, is this podcast, Protein Quality in the Food Matrix with Dr. Nick Bird, um, four reasons that I've just explained that whole protein sources are likely more valid to your goals of increasing muscle protein synthesis where nutrition is here to support. If you want to access our other podcasts or other outputs, please do visit our website where you can also learn about our online diploma in performance nutrition where we help you become a highly trained specialist in sport and exercise nutrition um, and it's totally online. So do go check it out. So, thank you for listening. Um, our website is www.theiopn.com and you can get our various social media channels via at the IOPN. Thank you for listening and I look forward to bringing another one of these science to practice overview presentations to you very soon.